Hi, I'm Carl. In this video, we're going to be having a look at question 71 to 74, which covers two units, um, unit 22 and unit 23. We're going to start off with unit 22, question 71, which says, considering the follow following equation relating to temperature regulation in a typical mammal, and we've got um, a, a list of factors that can affect the, the temperature of a mammal. Question 71 says, when one of the following responses which one of the following responses could the body make to decrease the body temperature of a person in a hot Turkish bath where ambient temperature is 40 degrees C and the air is fully saturated? So there's a, two important points uh, from this. The air is going to be 40 degrees C, which is much greater than the natural body temperature, which is around 37, and the air is fully saturated. Okay, so if we look at option A, what if we increased HE? Well, this is the change in energy due to evaporation, so through sweating. If the air is fully saturated, then the evaporation of water uh, wouldn't occur. And so we can rule this out as an answer. B says, what about if we increased HC, which is the conductive and convective uh, effect? Well, if the ambient temperature or the atmospheric temperature is greater than that of the body, then the body will warm up. And so you won't be able to give body uh, heat into the surroundings and radiate heat instead of be absorbing it so this wouldn't be the case given how warm the place is. C says what about H tot which is going to be the, the total amount of metabolic heat production which is always going to be positive. Um, so if we increase this would be increasing the temperature of the person so it wouldn't be decreasing the body temperature so it's not going to be the answer. So that means the answer for this one is going to be D which is none of the above. Moving on to question 72, now we're, we're told a little bit about what resonance hybrids are and it's where electrons can move um, from one atom to an adjacent atom to. Um, we've got a couple of rules here and I think it's important to go over them. Rule 1 says only electrons may be shifted to adjacent atoms or bond positions. 2 says resonance structures in which an atom carries more than its quota of electrons are not contributors to the real structures. And thirdly we've got the more important resonance structures show each atom with a complete octet and with as little charge separation as possible. And this third one's quite important in an upcoming question. But 72 says, which one of the following presents a pair of resonance structures? So I've drawn out the diagram of what resonance structures are here. And we can see that A has um, an electron moving from one carbon-carbon bond to another. Um, now, the problem here is that, of course, while the electron is moving from one to another, um, we're also moving hydrogens too. And so it's not a resonance um, hybrid in this case. So it's not going to be A. If we look at B, we have the same issue. Um, we have the movement of electrons from carbons to oxygens. Um, but we also have the movement of hydrogens to fill those valencies. And that's not going to be um, what's going to be working. So what about C then? We have an electron that moves from the carbon atom onto the oxygen and back. Is that a resonance hybrid? Well, it is because it follows the three of the rules and we don't have any uh, atoms having to move to make room for this. And then D, we can rule it out too because we've got the movement of these electrons back and forth. Um, but with that, we have the movement of hydrogens. So on one side, we have a CH3 but then it has to change to CH2 whenever the electron's present, which wouldn't be possible. So it's not going to be a resonance hybrid, meaning that C is the answer for number 72. 73 then says, consider the resonance structures 1, 2, and 3 shown below. Which one is the major contributor to the real structure? So this is where I think rule 3 is the most important. It says the most important resonance structures show each atom with a complete octet and with as little charge separation as possible. So this bit about charge separation I think is important because if we look at structure one and structure three we can see that we've got a positive and a negative charge separation um, on different atoms whereas two um, structure two doesn't have this and so it would be the most important and so based on that third rule I would say that the answer for this one is going to be B. And then 74 uh, says consider the following reactions which I've written out here. It says, which one of the following best explains why phenol is a much stronger acid than cyclohexanol? So, what makes something a strong acid is a good question to ask yourself. And going through each of these um, 
answers. Let's see whether or not that would be an argument for it. So A says the phenoxide ion is a monocyclic aromatic. That wouldn't necessarily make it a stronger or weaker acid. B says the phenoxide ion is a less stable than the cyclohexoxide ion. Okay, well, that probably is true given it doesn't have this um, benzene ring which would stabilize that negative charge, but it wouldn't make it, um, it wouldn't affect the strength of the uh, acid. However, if we look at C, while we're talking about this electron ring in the middle of the benzene, we can have a negative charge on the ion, on the phenoxide ion, which is spread across the entirety of this ring. And that allows it to, of course, be more stable. But why does this make it a stronger acid? Well, then, if we have this sort of negative charge spread over the entirety of the molecule, that means that its dissociation is um, a lot more um, likely, making it a stronger acid. So C would be the answer. But then what about D? It says a phenoxide ion is more soluble in a hydroxide solution than is a cyclohex a hexoxide ion. So of course the solubility of an acid does um, does uh, affect its strength, but you have to think about its um, dissociation constant. So the solubility and dissociation constants are two different things. So in this case, we could say the answer for 74 is going to be C. So that was um, two units we covered there, unit 22 and 23 from section three of the Green Booklet. I hope that helped.